not at home, but I said I've got to do this, so I've, I've got to do this. Good evening, everyone. Today we are on the topic um, stigma, discrimination, and prejudice as it affects mental health. Stigma, as you see, I'm not at home, and the things I use is not here, but I have to do it. I've just come in from work, and I said I've got to do it. Hello, UD. Thank you for joining. Hello, my sister. Hello, Yomi. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. So let's do this together. I really want your opinion. I really want to hear what you have to say about mental health, um, what is going on in your own area. This is all about Africa, not just Nigeria. What is going on? Hi, Adesola. What is going on around your area? because we are on about mental health today we want to know what really hi Jane hello what really do you think what is going on I mean the stigma the discrimination what really is mental health so as we normally do it's a 30 minutes video I want us to interact hello my brother I want us to interact and talk about mental health and I want to apologize to everybody because uh, my sister Nkoyo is not gonna come on today something just came on I, I, and we pray that she gets well and as she's um, going through, um, as she's in, in going through some treatment emergency. So we pray that she gets well. I'm praying for you. I love you, sis. You would have been here with me today, but you're not. So I am going to speak for both of us. So we are going to talk about mental health today. And we're going to talk about it in different um, topics. And the first topic we will talk about is the numbers, as we normally do. Let us know what the numbers are. They are very common. Mental health illnesses are very common, very, very common among everywhere in the whole world. Mental health illness is common in Africa, in Europe, the whole world. It is, a, it is more common than diabetes and hypertension. It's more common than cancer. It's, that is how common it is. Mental health is common, common like the next door to all of us. So it's common. A lot of people, greater than 85% of people are undiagnosed greater than 85 percent of people are undiagnosed good evening john thank you so much for joining it's been a hectic day but we've got to do this video i do not even care because it's not about doing a beautiful video it's about me and you talking about these things that are happening now one in four one in four people worldwide will be affected by mental illness at some point in their life can you imagine that one in four will be affected by mental health at a point in their life everybody one in four so it could be your next door neighbor 450 million people currently suffer with mental health illnesses 450 million people currently suffer with mental health illnesses mental health illness disorders places among is a leading cause of ill health in the whole world it is a leading cause of ill, Ill health in the whole world mental illnesses now it affects people you know so mental illness can affect somebody next to you your sister your brother it affects everybody mental health Ill, mental illnesses can affect anybody the next person to you how do you treat the person how do you relate do you even know what is a mental illness do you relate can you see the signs and how do you help this is the questions i want us to do what do we do how do we help can affect any one. It can affect any sex, it can affect any age, it can affect any social class, it, you can be rich, you can be poor, you can be whatever you are, it can affect everybody. It can affect the, the, the poor, the rich, the, the female, male, it can affect everybody. So this is serious as you can see it's not something that you you think that it um is far away from me i don't know anything about mental health it can affect me it can affect you and it said that in our lifetime one out of two people will suffer one form of mental health illness or the other in our lifetime one out of two of us will have mental health illnesses in our lifetime that is how common it is it's not something that somebody will say this person is a failure no, it's not. The person is not a failure. We are the failure who don't recognize that somebody is ill. I want to say it here that mental illness is just a, an illness like any other illness. It is just an illness like any other illness. It is not a personal failure. There is no failure. The only failure is the way we have responded to people with mental illnesses. But the person suffering it is not 
a failure. The person suffering it is not a failure. So that is what we should understand. The person suffering mental illness is not a failure, but we fail to recognize mental illness. Now, what is mental illness? Mental illness is a disease condition that affects the way a person thinks, feels, behaves, and relates to one another and its environment. It is the way that the person thinks, the person relates, the person acts, and the person behaves and relates to other people and the environment. It impairs their ability to function on a daily basis. So mental illness is a condition or a disease that affects the way somebody thinks, acts, feels, and behaves, and the way it relates to other people and also the environment. That is what mental illness is. It impairs the ability to function, so it impairs the ability to function daily. So when something affects your way of thinking, your way of acting, your way of behaving towards others, yourself and your environment, you have got a mental illness. That is as simple as it is. So why do we then think that in Africa, when we say mental illness, we think it is madness. That person is mad. It's not madness because it's not only the people that are naked on the street that have got mental illness. Somebody can be in your house, quiet, not talking. That person has got a mental illness, so that person can have major depression. Have you not heard people jump over the, of the bridge and kill themselves? You think that... They just woke up and jumped over the fence, uh, over the bridge and killed themselves. It is because they have suffered mental illness that nobody recognizes. They suffered a mental illness that nobody recognizes. They can be amongst you. They can be in the church. They can be in your community. They can even live in your house. Young girls are killing themselves in their houses and parents do not know that they are suffering mental illness. Young boys are killing themselves in their house with their parents and nobody knows. People leave their houses, leave the church where there's a community and go out and commit suicide because nobody recognizes that this person is actually ill. We don't recognize mental illnesses. We don't because we do not even know what they are. We are thinking that it's only the people that are naked on the street that have got mental illness. It is not. So I'm going to tell you different types of mental illnesses, different types. So it's not just the people who are naked on the street that have got mental illness. Somebody close to you have got mental mental illness. You've got to recognize it. So today, if we can recognize it, then we will talk about how we are going to deal with it. That is why we are having this conversation. Thank you so much for joining us. You are joining. Please share, share, share. Let us get the message out. Please share, 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 share. I know it's very quick and short, but I want us to get it. That mental illness can affect any one of us. And it is not until somebody is naked on the street that the person has got mental illness. Mental illness is a disease that affects the way somebody thinks, somebody acts, somebody behaves towards himself, his, his family or his relationship and his surrounding. That is what mental illness is. Now, what are the causes of mental illness? The causes of mental illness, number one, could be hereditary genetic. Now, they say that if a father has mental illness, a son or a daughter can actually have it. But because it is not one gene causing it, one, one sort of gene causing it, it's a multi-gene causing it, it is unlikely the person can have a chance of having mental illness, but he might not have it in his lifetime. But if the person's father had mental illness and there are any other factors in the environment that can trigger this person to have a problem, then the mental illness can come on. So genetic, it can run in family. So you can have a gene of having a mental illness. And supposing then in along the line, you have a, a, a problem, a stressful situation. Maybe somebody died that just triggers that mental illness and it comes on. That is basically how people do suffer with it. So you are born with a gene or you're carrying multiple genes that can make you to have a mental illness. But you don't have it until something else, another factor comes in and triggers that gene and then you have mental illness number two environmental factors what environmental factors are we on about we are on about things like um cocaine drugs a divorce stress you lost your job you change your job or you suddenly lost your job you suddenly uh, stress um, uh, um, um cocaine cannabis people that take um, heroin, cocaine, cannabis, they call it all different types of names, amphetamines. These things can affect the way that our brains work. These are environmental factors. Number three, 
biological factors. These factors include things in our brain that helps the nerves, transmission of nerves, the core neurotransmitters, they are proteins. There can be a disruption in that function in the brain. So when there's a disruption, the person can develop mental illness. When there's a disruption, neurotransmitters are, are like... Um, a current that helps to transmit one information from one nerve end to the other. When there's a disruption in that nerve end, in that transmission, the person can have a disruption in the brain and can have mental illness. So, example, maybe you have a brain injury or maybe there is some abnormality. You have an infection, like viral infection. These people can have a mental illness because something has disrupted that normal flow. When there is that disruption, the person can have mental illness and it can be anybody. So take for example, you suffer with um, a viral infection that has affected your brain. You didn't know. All of a sudden, you start behaving abnormally. We're going to talk about the symptoms. You start behaving abnormally. People will start saying, what will Africans say, number one? They will say you're possessed. Number two, they say your family are cursed. That is what they say. But we do not ask why. We are not. We are asking who. When do we see somebody that is not well, mentally ill, we say, who did this to this my child? Who did this to my brother? Who did this to this man? Who? We don't ask why. What is the cause of this problem? What can we do as a community? Do we take the person to the hospital? We will come to that. So we need to know that mental illness, most of it is not a cause. It's not a, a, a family cause. It is not what the person did. It could just be a disruption in the normal function in the brain. In the, in the brain. It could just be a dysfunction. Now we talk about the fourth cause, psychological cause. Psychological cause is common in Africa. When somebody is growing up, you are abused emotionally, abused sexually, abused physically. All the abuse is common, and this person begins to develop or get into that 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 state that he develops a mental illness. What sort of mental illnesses are we on about? These things can interact, like environment, stress, people that are straight. As uh, 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 stress, job, no job, hunger everywhere, especially in Nigeria, Africa, on hunger everywhere. Somebody is stressed, he's got children, he can send them to school. These things can add stress us to bring about mental illness. So what types of mental illness are we on about? There is depression. It's very common, my brothers and sisters. Depression is very common. It is very common when stress is affecting the way that we act every day. You are low in mood. You cannot function. You cannot do anything. Just check yourself. You might just be under stress. You might just be depressed. And depression has got different stages. You can get to a point that you've got major depression. You cannot function. You start thinking of killing yourself. You feel that you are unworthy. You feel that you cannot, there's nothing good about you you feel that you just have to kill yourself if i kill myself i feel better if i kill myself the, the world will be a better place if i kill myself people will relax that is major depression when you start having those thoughts that i am unworthy i'm not good enough i don't know i don't have anything what am i living for my mates are better than me these thoughts can pull you down and make you start to think of killing yourself that is why people jump over the bridges that is why people put poison and kill themselves because they've been suffering with these thoughts but they cannot share it our community have refused for us to be able to share that I'm feeling I'm not feeling good I am sad I'm not happy it's affecting my day-to-day -day life when these things affect you and you're beginning to feel low all the time and you cannot function you are having depression there's bipolar sometimes you're having depression sometimes you're very anxious that is bipolar personality disorders you see some people they cannot relate with you you talk one they are talking to they are up and down they cannot relate with you those people have personality disorder and it is a mental illness there is another one called schizophrenia is very common within africans and we leave these people till they become really really sick very very unwell when they become very very unwell they tear their clothes they move on the street and we say they are mad when we say they are mad these people are people that can be treated so we talk about schizophrenia, depression, bipolar. What else can cause us to have mental illness? People that have given birth, they give birth, they are going through stress. They can have postpartum 
depression, psychosis. They start talking nonsense. These people may be during the stressful period of pregnancy and giving birth. There is a disruption in their brain, a lot of stress going on, and this just triggers mental illness. They start to have what is called psychosis. They start to, to I'm going to talk about psychosis in a minute. So it is not that this person, oh, they have just given birth finally and they want to kill her or they have given birth finally, they want to, 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 to deal with her. So look at the way she's talking. Have you found out? Is she well? Is she sick? It's not only fever that is sickness. It's not only headache that is sickness. Mental illness is an illness that we should recognize, my brothers and sisters, and also act upon it. And the first thing to do is not to, 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 to abuse the person. It's not to say the person is a failure. It's not to say the person is... is what did you do? What did your family do? The first thing to do is to seek medical help. Let me pause and just read some comments here. Somebody said, what is more important is the spreading of the awareness to as many people as you can. So more strength to you. Says, Thank you so much. Keep being a blessing. My dear sister, that's fine. Um, God bless you mightily. Bless you too. Um, God bless you, my sister. God bless you too. A wealthy young man with no medical illness tried to kill himself. And when he regained consciousness from the rat poison he took, the medical team realized he had endogenous depression. He has made several attempts right from childhood that is what i'm saying there are people within us all of us will recognize that this person is not behaving well there is something wrong with this person we don't know it what we do we take these people i have stories to the hospital and to the to the prayer houses or whatever we take them to yes so these are uh, um mental health illnesses i'm just going to mention them and as i'm mentioning them you can you can you can relate with them so environmental stressors we mentioned now hyperactivity disorder you have a child the child is behaving very very hyperactive no concentration relaxed concentration not doing well sit down he cannot sit he cannot stand he's always jumping about have you realized sometimes they tell you this this child is possessed this child is possessed this child is possessed take this child to the to the to the let the pastor go and pray for this child they'll pray for this child you move from one church you move from one place have you gone to the psychiatrist to keep this child and actually diagnose what is wrong with this child no you haven't you've gone everywhere like the video we watched that young guy has been taken to from one prayer house from one healing home to another and i listened carefully that young man has not been to the hospital that young man has not been diagnosed the video on my page can you go and watch it when we finish this program that young man has not been diagnosed but he's been moving from one place to another this young man started hearing voices he said the first day he heard a voice he looked back he didn't see anybody the next minute the voice was too loud he put his hands in his ears and the voice was too loud and the next thing he took his clothes he was on the street and these things come in wave he doesn't know what is wrong with him and nobody has taken him to the hospital they are praying for him they are laying hands on him they are moving him from one church to another from one prayer house to another and this is just for us to know that please these people are ill they are ill in their body, like you have fever, like you have diabetes, cancer. Why do you take them to the hospital? They take them to the hospital so that they can be treated. These people need treatment. These people need treatment. These people need you to take them to, to, to the hospital so that they can be diagnosed properly and given medication. It is said that over 80% of people with mental illnesses, when they are diagnosed early, they can actually live a normal, productive life. Have you seen somebody naked on the streets of Europe? Have you seen anybody naked on the streets of America? No, because when they recognize these people, they take them to the hospital and they get treated. They get a diagnosis and they give them medication they have different ways i'm not a psychiatrist but i know that they have different treatment modalities to deal with these people so we talked about anxiety somebody can just sit down all of a sudden he start to have palpitations sweating pains and needles all over him it lasts for a few minutes maybe 10 minutes and then you feel better your heart goes as if it's racing as a horse is riding your head is heavy you have pains and needles you feel that you're possessed something has come over you 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 could just be having panic attacks anxiety you need to go to the hospital and get proper diagnosis these are things that we don't know we leave them we we, we torture ourselves because we lack the knowledge 
We lack the knowledge. We torture ourselves. There are people who have panic attacks. It comes over them. Their heart is racing fast. Their head is heavy. They have been and needle. They can have weakness in their arm. It lasts for a short period and it goes away. And they say, it just comes over me. That thing is like a demon. It just comes over me. No, you have an illness. You are sick. You need treatment. That's all it is. We talked about ob obsessive compulsory um, disorder where somebody can lock the door 20 times, somebody can polish his tool 20 times, somebody can open and close the window 20 times. He's always checking and over checking. You will be asking, What is wrong with this person? This person, if it's your husband, you say, Oh, he's always checking on me, checking on things. He can just be having mental illness, which is called obsessive compulsory disorder. They are always under compulsion to check and recheck because things nothing is right for them they're always checking and rechecking now let's talk about psychosis is psychosis is one something that we all of all of us mentioned that person is psychotic he's psychotic he's psychotic he's mad what is psychosis now psychosis has three components number one hallucination the person hears voices or hears sounds. You can hear voices. Nobody else is hearing it. You just hear the voices or you can hear sounds. Somebody, you can hear sounds and you're asking. Somebody is singing. They said no. Somebody is doing. You said no. You, that is hallucinations. You are feeling that somebody is touching you, but nobody is touching you. Ah, can somebody touch me now? Nobody is touching you. That is hallucination. Number two, delusion. You have a fixed idea. You have a fixed idea that something is this way. Everybody says no. You say no. This thing is this way. You can say, okay, um, Lagos is in Ghana. People say no. Lagos is in Nigeria. You said no. Lagos is in Ghana. That is my belief, a fixed belief that something that everybody knows is wrong. You believe that is right. That is delusion. Delusion, a lot of people with mental illness have delusion. They have delusion. They feel that something is right when everybody knows that that thing is wrong. They follow a certain, they can say that I have been made, I've been anointed by God to come and deliver the world. I am the one anointed by God to come and deliver the world. That is delusion. I am the one, the special agent sent to kill the queen. I am the only one they've sent to kill the queen. All my parents are planning to kill me. All my, my son, they've told me that my son is the one that wants to kill me. Everybody says, how can your son kill you? I know, I'm sure that my son is being the one that wants to kill me. That is delusion. And check it, that person can just be psychotic. Number three. What else do they have? Cognitive impairment. They cannot relate with you. They cannot understand what you understand. They are talking nonsense. How are you? Uh -huh. I went to the market and when I went, I didn't buy paper. You said, John. I said, how are you? Uh -huh. So your sister went there and she didn't come back. And she, John, I'm saying, how are you? This is conversation. They will not talk. They will just be talking nonsense. And we say these people have, they are mad. Oh, they are mad. Oh, who did this to this person? Oh, their family people have come again. Oh, my God. Oh, their family. This person has got mental illness. Mental illness. That is what it is. And I want us Africans to understand that these people have mental illness. Muna said, you're very right. When it is diagnosed on time, it has been controlled by treatment because we have many patients that have diagnosed her psychiatric patient and they look normal. A lot of people I've seen, they are living in their houses. They are living on their own, but they have got severe mental illness. I was at work today. I saw one of it. I don't know why God brings these people my way. Anytime I have a topic to talk about, God always brings lots of patients with that problem for me to see. I saw a patient today. He has severe depression. He almost killed himself. He hears voices. He was hospitalized in December. January was sent home. He has a house. He's living on his own and he's living alone. He brought himself to the hospital because he has palpitations. And I asked him, he said, ah, he was really bad, but now he's well. People that take cannabis, people that take um, heroin, people that take um, cocaine, they can start having um, hearing voices. They can tear their clothes and go. What we need to do as a family is to take this person to go and see a psychiatrist. We need to take this person to go and see a psychiatrist. As soon as you see that there is an abnormality in the way the person is acting, is thinking, is behaving, and that abnormality is affecting yourself, himself, and the surrounding, you need to take the person to see a psychiatrist. 
very important. We need a strong political will to care for our mental health. The government is not interested. The religious leaders are focused on other things and even worsen the already bad situation. The community have been brainwashed. Thank you so much, Estella. This is where I'm going. What do we do as individuals? I asked that question all over the, the, the week. I said, what do we do? What do we do? If Nkoye was here, she would tell you about, because she works with a lot of them, that they are doing well. On medication, they are doing well. What we need to do, number one, is for us to have support groups. We need to have support groups. So if you are on this platform, if you, wherever you come from, especially for depression, some women are so depressed. Some women are extremely depressed. They have nobody to talk to. Do you know, just support groups that people come out and talk about their problems alone can take away 50% of their symptoms. Do you know that support groups alone can make somebody who wanted to kill himself not to kill himself again? Just sit down and talk and tell you about your problems. You be a listening ear. Like that boy on that video. Everybody thinks that the boy is mad. They say he's an arm robber, a yahoo yahoo boy. A king took him in. They said the king wants to use him for rituals. So the king has to throw him out because the whole community say you are taking this boy into your house. Are you sure you are not the one using him for rituals? But there is none of us, nobody that can go and stand his feet. To do good is not easy. To do good is not easy. People will abuse you. People will talk to you. But we have to do good. The government is not interested. They are not going to make any regulation. But we have got these people. We own them. They are our brothers. They are our sisters. They are our fathers. They are our mothers. What do we do as individuals? We have to recognize mental illness. We have to get proper diagnosis. We have to take them to the proper facility that they need treatment. We have to love them. We have to care for them. I showed you videos where people have chained them onto the, to rocks, chained them to trees, beat them, shout on them. They don't need that. I have been in a consulting room with somebody who is completely psychotic. I kept calm. I sat down and I spoke to him calmly. And the person was speaking back to me calmly when we start shouting we take these people to the hospital they start beating them on the head they start shouting on them they will not recover i have a story of a young man a young man whose brother died of depression he killed himself he was also suffering from depression and he was in the verge of killing himself they were taking him to churches they were beating his head he said the way they are slapping him he was even getting more more and more worried more and more depressed but somebody said to him you need to see a psychologist and he just went to see a psychologist within one year the whole life of that young man has been transformed within one year. We just need to get it right. We need to get it right. We need to get groups in. We need to get communities in. We need. You can just get up, go to your village, speak to them about if you see somebody who they are maltreating and saying the person is, is mad, is, is caused, is it? Go and speak to them. Have you taken this person to the hospital? Has he got treatment? Has he been treated? What is it that you have done? Go and speak to them. Let us be our brother's keeper. Let us help each other. The government is not interested. They won't be interested. They have never been since I was born. And now I'm above 40. They have not been interested. When will they be interested? And each one of us can have mental illness at one point or the other. We have got to help ourselves. We've got to form support groups, support mechanisms to deal with these people. We have got to come together and say, what can we do as a community? If you know of a young boy, a young man, you can start a small group and say, stop smoking group, smoking cessation group. You gather every Tuesday, you speak to young people. You can have a small group in your community, in your village, in your estate, and say this group is for dr uh, drug addicts, people that are on drugs. You speak to them about the effect of drugs, cannabis of, or cocaine. These are little things we can do as individuals. It's not every time we are always saying, oh, the government is not interested. Oh, the government is not interested. What about you? What about you? Are you interested? You need to stand up and be interested. We need to work together. If you know a psychiatrist, say, come on, let's take you to the hospital. The parents will help. If people know that this thing happening to my son is an illness, I bet you they will seek help. But they don't know. Ignorance. We don't know. We take them and say they are caused. We pray and pray and pray. Two years, three years, four years, and the person has become worse. 
he tears his clothes, he starts eating from trash can, he starts eating from dustbin. It doesn't happen. It is an illness. It can be treated. It can be treated. The latest addiction is pentazosin. Pentazosin is in the group of, of, um, of um, tramadol and morphine, so it is very addictive. Here we have groups that they deal with people on, that are addicted. Because these things can cause them, when you take them off all these drugs, they can have psychosis. We need to understand. And the last thing I want us to know today is that mental illness is not synonymous to cause. Mental illness is not synonymous to somebody, what somebody can do. I'm not disputing the fact that there is spiritual warfare and spiritual things. But I want us to face reality. I want us to face the reality that there can be a cause for this particular one. Because the same life we live in Europe is the same brain and the same things we have in Africa. Why is the demons in Africa causing the people in Africa to run mad on, 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 on the street naked? Why is the same madness not causing people in Europe? Because there are laws and there are principles, they are God that gov governs this thing they are getting treatment but in africa we abandon them we leave them to fit they run on the street mad naked we need to create awareness i'm working with somebody in ghana he's got a charity and we'll be creating awareness we'll be talking with these people if you're in nigeria i'm happy we work together we'll be creating awareness about drugs especially young people in secondary school in in, in university we talk to them about drugs and alcohol and what effect it can have in the brain we talk to the young people about cocaine about cannabis about heroin we talk to people who are medication if you know that you are giving your patient a medication that is addictive you've got to follow the person up you've got to tell the person that these things cause this type of thing beware you don't just give medication and leave the people like that you've got to tell them you've got to deal with them you've got to follow them up if you know there's somebody in your community young boy you see he's always smoking you walk past and you're going to church you see instead of you to take it upon yourself and say young man this thing this is and this and this i'll give you an example there are some people in my daughter's school, young people, who my daughter came home and said they were smoking shisha. I never knew what is shisha. I said, let us go to the computer. We went and we googled it. What is shisha? Is shisha is more, more dangerous than cigarettes. And we googled it together and we read it together. And that awareness will make a child to say, no, 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 I don't want to do this. I can't do this. It affects my health. We need to be able to create awareness. We need to be able to take responsibility for our brothers and sisters. This is the solution I am proposing. What do you think? If we strip ourselves of self-righteousness and judgmental attitude, we can actually support each other regarding mental health. Thank you so much. Because we think that these people are failures. They are the ones that are caused. No, we are the ones that are failing. We are the ones failing. I am failing. You are failing. We need to rise up and help these people. Like that young man roaming about in Lagos. He made a video. He speaks very good English. Nobody is helping him. Nobody. We have psychiatrists in the house. We have psychiatrists, consultant doctors. They need to come together and create awareness. They need to come together and say, look, community awareness. That is number one principal prevention of illness in any part of the world. Prevention. You need to create awareness. We need to go to the communities and speak to these people. We need to tell them that this person has got an illness. He's not mad. He's not caused. He's not a failure. We need to deal with this. We need to have brotherly love. We need to show each other love. And by so doing, we can actually reduce the number. We can start somewhere. I'm not saying it's easy, but we can start somewhere. Let us form community groups in our society. Let us form support groups for those depressed people because they are killing themselves every day. Let us form support groups and help them. Simple motivational speech. Look, you are not a failure. Look, you are a success. You just need to keep pushing. You just need to keep doing. This is all we need. You just need to keep going, brother. You are not a failure. It will be okay. You look in your congregation. You see somebody who cannot, he's not talking. He's so depressed. He's withdrawn. He's not looking you in the eye. These are signs of depression. Go close to the person. What is wrong with you, my brother? What is wrong with you, my sister? Talk to the person one-to-one -one and bring out that. Because the next minute you can hear that the person has died. And it has been your responsibility to have noticed that this person was depressed. 
So I really pray that this is the aspect. I am not here to talk big English, big dragons about uh, depression and the cause and, the, and the, the chemicals. And I just want us to come together and create awareness. Come together and say, look, you've got depression. You've got depression. Let's come together and form a group. Talk to each other. Why are you depressed? Why are you sad? Why And we deal with this thing. Some people have been abused since they were children. Raped, abused, and the culture of silence, they are not able to talk. They are not able to talk and they become depressed. They become psychotic because the build-up of the things that has happened in their life is too much. Nobody to talk to. No advisor, no counselor. We can be counselors. What does it take to be a counselor? A counselor is just to have a listening ear. Just listen. Believe the person. Don't judge him. Don't judge her. Don't look at her as a prostitute. Don't look at her as a sinner. Don't judge her. Just listen to her. Just love her. That's all we need. When we see them on the street, don't follow people and love them. A young woman went on the street, picked up a mad woman, loved her because she used to know her in their secondary school, dressed him up, sat him out. He became normal again. He became, he, they need love. We lack, we don't show them love. They, they tear their clothes because what is going on in their brain, they don't understand. And nobody understands. Nobody, none of us understands. We need to tell them, look, you are sick. Yes, things are going on in your brain. Hold your hand. You are sick. Just try it. If you go with love to any mad person, the person will not beat you. Because they are ill. But when you go with aggression, they become aggressive. Because they don't understand what is going on. Everybody is quiet. People are dying every day. You are a doctor. You go and sit in your consulting room. What are you Speak to people. Tell them what is going on. Depression is killing us. Women are dying. Men are dying because of stress. They are dying. Please, let's come together. Form support groups. Start to create awareness. Start to talk to people. Let us do it together. Together we can do this. I'm happy to work with people. Anybody wants to create awareness, I'm happy. We're going to start in Ghana because there a lot of women are depressed. We just form support groups. We just speak to them. We pray together. We sing together. We support each other. That is all we need. And these people may not kill themselves. They go home and feel somebody loves them. Let us love one another. Let us look out for one another. Mental illness can be diabetes, hypertension. Please, let's come together and help them support each other thank you so much thank you god bless you god bless you thanks for joining every one of you thank you for all your contribution i really appreciate it god bless everyone and koyo is not here i apologize and she's poorly but she will join us any other time when we are doing this topic again thank you so much love is medicinal thank you so much Omolara, you are on that side yes we have to do it together form support groups thank you so much until next week bye Bye.